Welcome back to episode three of How to Design Your Next Career, where we're talking all about not what you're doing now, but what you'll be doing in the future and how to figure out what that might be. I'm Josh. This is Justin. And uh, we just love this topic. We're not doing it because we, uh, we're we going to make any money on this, but we want to share some information and uh, think that this is the future. So yep. Justin, what's uh, what's on tap for episode three here? What are we talking about? Yeah. So, you know, let me give you a little bit of where we've been and uh, and where we're going. So, you know, in episode two, we talked about, you know, who you are, right? And and really getting to the foundations of what makes you you. Now we're going to talk about what I like to call optioneering. Uh, I worked for a design software company for a long time called Autodesk. And we always talked about optioneering. In other words, engineering options. Uh, and in this case, we're going to help you engineer options for your future. Now, if you remember, right, we talked about the, the definition of design uh, and specifically that guy, uh, Carl Lagerfeld, and how he would come up with things that would eventually get to the runway and maybe even a department store, which was coming up with lots and lots and lots of options. And in that case, right, there's no single right solution. There are only options to be tested uh, in some said future and also in some future episode uh, of this series. Right. And so in that it's right, the past was about sort of looking for and, you know, choosing solutions. But when we talk about career design and life design, there are no simple solutions, right? It's just about options. There's and there's lots of options. Some are better for now. Some are better for later. Some are no good at all, perhaps for some people. Uh, but you're better off generating and designing lots of options in order to figure out which ones might be good for now and later and so forth. So, you know, in this, there are lots of ways to come up with and, and you know, ideate, which is the sort of the, the common term for create, you know, I, using idea, ideation or ideas and creating lots of options. But we, we sort of thought there, there's a couple of really good ones uh, that are super simple for people to do, and but also kind of profound in how they get to the nut of who you are and build a bridge of the from episode two. Uh, to now and in, in generating options based on who you are. So the first one, uh, you know, I would like to talk about is this one. Um, it's a really simple technique by a guy named Richard Bowles. Uh, he's also a prolific author, uh, really, really great books out there. And he's got this who am I technique. Uh, and the way this works is this is, you know, you can use post-its or Miro or mural, or you could use just a list uh, or, or note cards or whatever you'd like to use. But what you do is it's sort of twofold. One is you list th the things that make who you are you, right? So you know, a husband, you could be a father. In this case, this is Richard, right? He's a husband, father, teacher, entrepreneur, writer, son, brother, translator. So these are like very personal things, not just professional things, but also just very personal things, life things. And after you've listed all of the things about, you know, that are that make you you, then you list the things underneath that that uh, that you like about that thing or you're really excited about being that thing. Right. And so here, you know, as a teacher, uh, which is number three for Richard, right, he likes helping others and being useful and exploring and revealing and exercising, planning, presentations, learning, writing, so forth. Right. And so you're going to list all of these things that excite you about that thing, about that definition of you. And once you've done that, and especially if you can come up with 10 or, or more cards or definitions for yourself, uh, just like Richard has here, what you end up doing is circling the common denominators. Right. Sometimes they might be called something a little different, but you'll find those common denominators. And when you find those common denominators, these then are potential directions and maybe even design criteria about you know what your career should or might include. And so if we looked back at at Richard's cards here, what you'll end up finding is you know he likes exploring, revealing the mysteries, truths, planning, presenting, and all of these other things. And you could then use these as maybe guide rails or you know or you know little uh, little signals for the future. So when you start looking at potential new career options, life options, things like that, these might also then be part of the design criteria as we used last time um, 
to to help you find that, right? Justin, like what yeah. I what I like about this exercise and what I find um, <clears throat> sort of the the analog here is kind of these the vision boards that you might put together for yeah. your own life that I think is kind of a common trope in, in popular American culture of the whole intent of a vision board is you want to find uh images of or words that evoke something right. exciting for you and you put it up on a board you actually physically put it up in your room and what it does is you start to absorb those yeah. ideas and they keep them front of mind and so it's not so much that i when i go and look for a job i'm i'm in the front of my mind do i know it's got something to do with mysteries and truths but it's almost as you're kind of scanning the landscape or yeah. assessing you have an additional kind of data set to 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 map against and you kind of go oh oh i do i remember i exploring and revealing was really important and that this idea is prevalent in this kind of work yeah. and i think that's just really powerful right so it's it's less definitive and more i guess informative maybe yeah i totally agree uh and i love that josh because if you think about you know, visioning in one hand, you know, you could, you know, like a vision board, you're coming up with visions for the future. What I like about something like this um, uh, is, is it's also not just coming up with future visions, but it's creating this bridge and also creating this bridge with those exercises we talked about before, like the wheel of life and the compass and the, you know, the Moscow, the design criteria. This helps to create a nice bridge because you're not just starting with the future. You're starting with now, like who am I and what excites me? And that then, you know, starts to reveal what might your visions or your vision board look like uh, in that future. And I, to I totally agree with you. That's very much what this is. These aren't, these might point towards future career choices or whatever it might be, future career options, but just as much, these are, you know, these are a vision for what should be included in those career options, which is, which is, I think, profound in many ways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the next one is, is this one is mind mapping and free association. Um, you know, I think this one's just really, really powerful as well for as simple as it is. Uh, it turns out that when people do this and, you know, they put their whole selves into it and, and really get into a space where they're thinking about who they are and what they like, this one really helps to find, you know, what you might want to do in some future. So it's really simple, right? Mind mapping free association starts with brainstorming on your own. Like what's something right now that I, I feel like, Hey, this is what I love to do in life or what I'm really excited about in life. The things that give me energy and you write that thing down and you, you know, you, you write it right down on a piece of paper, or again, you can use your favorite piece of software or service or whatever it might be. And then you start listing the attributes that make that thing what it is, or the things that excite you about that thing very specifically, right? And those become the links. And you kind of keep linking. And what you end up finding are, you know, this free association, in this case, this person started with like, really likes being outdoors, and likes hiking, and uh, backpacking and mountains. And that becomes, I really like exploring and being an explorer, right? And then you start to see like being outdoors also includes travel in Hawaii. Oh, you know what I really like about that is I love tropical beaches. And you start to follow these lines. And as, as you follow these lines in a very similar way that you do on the, you know, the who am I exercise, you you gives you a chance to start circling or highlighting the things that are really, you know, the, the center of these that make these things exciting for you that you figure out, oh, this is really who I am. I am an explorer and I love pirates and tropical beaches and exotic locations. And I, and I love when I get to somewhere riding a bike, right. And by doing this and sort of circling or highlighting the things that are really important that make up this category. And of course it could be a lot bigger than this one. Uh, in a very similar way, you start to find what might become design criteria or guide rails or even visions for that future uh, that feed into, hey, what should I be looking for uh, in my next career role or whatever? One of the, <clears throat> I'll give a pro tip that I've experienced and what you yeah. can see here is um, you start with the thing you like, yeah. but 
you connect to the words that come up don't have don't put that restriction on it you can see on the the kind of uh south uh side of the <clears throat> being outdoors you kind of see surfing exercise running usain bolt i don't know if this person yeah. likes usain bolt or right like <laughs> but the point isn't so much that you want to do that you want to loosen up those connections in your brain right and just kind of go there and you don't have to circle it if it's not important and i think what we what the value of this is getting to something that is unexpected and you wouldn't have gotten to in another way and yeah. so i would just practice this you can start with being outdoors and then the next one is you know you're going to start with you know maybe reading books or whatever it might be and try and try and try again and again, all of these are just like, how do you access these ideas that you wouldn't necessarily access if you were kind of coming straight at it? What are the things that I absolutely need to have? Um, like we did with Moscow, which is great. That's a great tool. But now we're trying to extend that into a further kind yeah. of further afield. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, it's interesting about certainly like this one, to your point, Josh, is these it's such free association that what you're not seeing here, probably some of the things that you'd find on that Moscow, which is like money, right? Yeah, this person didn't put money, maybe you will. Um, but this is more about like what excites someone or, you know, and, and the things that are really important to them. And I, I totally agree, Josh, like this kind of often it's like getting out of your comfort zone while staying in your excitement zone in some way. <laughs> Great. Uh, that's a good quote. I think that's the point for the, for the episode. Uh, I, I, yeah, I just copyrighted that. Um, <laughs> um, you know, speaking of like getting out of your comfort zone, you know, sometimes, and this is definitely true of just about any kind of design practice or methodology, which is when it comes to ideating or co-creating options, you know, or generating options, optioneering, um, you know, often it's it's just as good and maybe even better to bring people together to help you do this. Now, you know, if you're going to be doing this for a life change for a career or whatever your next career is, you know, what's important is that you bring together people with the understanding that, you know, they kind of have to leave their egos at the door uh, and be really objective and ready to help you do this. But this is also a really good way uh, by bringing, again, friends, maybe family members together, maybe old colleagues that you get along with together in, in a room to help not necessarily write the things that are exciting to you, but maybe ask you deep questions about, you know, times uh, that did excite you, that you felt really happy and satisfied with who you were and your work or whatever it may be. Um, you know, often just bringing people together to do this work with you uh, is, you know, is tremendously gratifying. And just like that free association, what you mentioned, Josh, right, it might even get you further than you just doing it alone in a, you know, in a, in a room that's really quiet or, or whatever. Working with other people is a key uh, part of design, no matter how you apply it and yep. being able to uh, welcome all ideas, crazy and otherwise, and then be able to synthesize those, integrate those, and the good mm -hmm. ideas come from anywhere. And I, I love what you were saying about the past is about choosing a solution, uh, and the, 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 the future is about exploring options. The past is when we think about case studies, you're like, well, who did, right. how did this person do it? Let me do that. Um, the world is moving too fast for that now, right? Like whatever yeah. you're studying, um, might not be, you know, you're, oh, here's the, here's the idea that I was trying to get at, which is the career that you will have is, you know, doesn't exist today, right? When you're yeah. an undergrad and, and that's the, essentially the driving motivation behind this construct. And this idea is we need to start to understand ourselves and what we're interested in, how we want to create value. So we can actually identify when we see those weak signals start to, to happen around different ideas. And I think that's really what's so powerful about this. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you want to create, if you want to create, uh, you know, work with other people to create your, your next life, your next career life, check out the DMBA, uh, the MBA in design strategy, where Justin and I both teach. It is an incredible program um, that is unlike anything else out there, uh, check it out. It's super, super, super interesting. And especially for folks that are thinking about what their next life might be. Exactly. 
Well, I think that's it for this quick episode. Uh, thank you everyone for joining and uh, watching this. And uh, we're going to shoot another here episode here soon on prototyping. So look forward to that too.